Good morning, and it is still morning yet, grade three and four. It's Friday, April 24th, 2020, and here I am with uh, Wisconsin history uh, lesson for you. So would you please make sure you have your here comes the train um, worksheet and have a separate piece of paper and a pencil. And if you need to grab those things, go ahead and uh, pause the video, grab them, and then get a comfy spot to do some work with me, okay? We will work together on a few things here. Alrighty, um, it has, I think, most of your assignments for today. Remember to submit your packet for Castle on Viola Street. Um, if you haven't already told me your King of Glory verses, do that. Uh, grade four, you have lesson 110, which I had a separate video on, and lesson 105. Um, I had a separate video on the reading too, um, so make sure that you look at that. We have the story that we have coming up next week is not on AR, okay? Um, it's a Time for Kids one, a magazine article, um, but I do want you to take a look at that, and you'll have a packet for next week as well. That will be in your materials that you pick up for the next three weeks, our last three weeks. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. Um, virtual tours, make sure you're continuing that. That work is not due until Monday, okay? So um, if you haven't started yet for some reason, no panicking. Do some today, do some tomorrow, do some Sunday, do a couple today, okay? Um, it'll all work out. And make sure you're completing the Google Classroom um, worksheet with that as well. So right now we're going to talk about Wisconsin history and transportation. I trust that you have read your selection as I asked you to do yesterday. My apologies for not being able to get back to you um, for an actual class, um, but we can do it right now. So I'm going to cut to my other screen so that I can sh show you the papers and work with you a little bit, okay? All right, so what you're doing is you are reading a line graph here, okay? You have two line graphs to read. And now definitely this is set up differently than we do our temperature graphs, but you've done line graphs before. Oh, I have to be careful not to bump my table, don't I? All right. Um, so here we look at, this is our line graph for the temperature of March 2020 in the green and black. The orange and black, I'm going to switch these just a little bit here up. There we go. Uh, I want you to be able to see both of them. There we go. All right. And then the orange and black one is from October 2019. Now, granted, the October one goes a lot longer um, because in March, this is where we stopped coming to school, okay, and had to uh, be safer at home. Um, but what things can you tell by looking at the two line graphs? Well, we can tell that here, um, you can tell what it's going up by. This is going up by tens of temperature, okay, and so the other one is the same, all right, and um, on this one, things stayed relatively the same, up a day, down a day, up a day, down a day, so, but relatively they stayed kind of the same. If we look at the October one, we can see it's quite consistent, not so much up and down, but several days more in a row, then a little bit up, then down, then a little bit up then down, then quite a bit up, but then look what we can see here. From October 21st is this date here. In the next 10 days, it continually goes colder, 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 okay? And so you can see a pattern when you look at a line graph, all right? And it can give you quick information. Now let's take a look at the line graphs on our page. And this is talking about U.S. production. And the production of what? Well, we can read our paragraph here, and it tells us the United States needed energy and resources to power railroads and the industry, like the paper industry, uh, the mill industry, the brewing industry. Oil, once a problem, was now a solution for lubricating and fueling combustion engines. And we read about the combustion engines in our packet or in our paper. The line graph below shows the growth of the steel, you know what steel is, and petroleum industry. So what's petroleum? Well, petroleum is what we get from the ground to produce oil and gasoline and diesel oil and those types of things, okay? So it can be used to power um, vehicles or equipment, but it can also be used as a lubricant, and that is what we're looking at here, lubricant or a fuel, okay? 
Now this shows the growth of both steel and petroleum from 1860 to 1900, so 40 years. So here's the one that's steel, and you see 1860, 1870, 1880, 1890, 1900. Here's the one for petroleum, same years. Now notice that the increments for our graphs are different. For steel, it's millions of tons, okay? And it goes up by ones, 1 million ton, 2 million tons, 3 million tons, 4 million tons, and so on. Look at petroleum. Petroleum is millions of barrels, millions of barrels. And I forgot, I was going to look up how many gallons were in a barrel, but I forgot to do that. But a big barrel, okay? And these go by five. So this is 5 million, if you're right here. 10 million, 15 million, 20 million. Like right here in 1880, it's 25 million barrels of petroleum. Okay, not just oil, but petroleum. All right, so we want to make sure that we're using the right terms along with it. So you're going to use the information on this graph to answer the questions along the side here and also the question at the bottom. So I will go through a couple questions with you together. Let's look at question number one, and it says, what year did petroleum production begin rapid growth? So not just that it grew a little bit, like we can see in petroleum, okay, grew a little bit. Oh, but then look, jump, jump, jump. So what year did that rapid growth begin? So we look, where did it begin before the next big jump? And we see that is in 1870. So our answer for number one would be 1870. So go ahead and fill that in on your sheet. 1870 is the year that petroleum production began rapid growth. Okay, looking at petroleum, make sure you're at the right graph. Okay, um, let's look at number five. What year did the steel industry begin rapid growth? So now we're going to look at the steel industry. Little bit of growth, little bit of growth, but then now look, boom, and then way boom. All right, so this shows some rapid growth right here, doesn't it? To go up almost one, two, two more million, three more millions of tons, okay? So what year did the steel industry begin a period of rapid growth? It began it in 1880. We have to look at where did it start, okay? And so that would be 1880. Now it had an even greater growth beginning in 1890, didn't it? From 1890 to 1900 was even greater than 1880, but where did it begin? Uh, we started some rapid growth in 1880, okay? Now you do have other questions about petroleum that you'll use this graph for. You have other questions about um, steel production, which for six and seven, and then for eight, it's asking you to think about how they go together. Use the information from the paragraph up on top and what you saw in the graph to give your best idea for why steel production's rapid growth began after the petroleum industry began to increase. So you have to think about how, um, what, why does steel need that petroleum, that oil that was once a problem, now a solution for lubricating and fueling combustion engines. So think about what you've been reading in your selections today. Um, why would that be important for the railroads and the um, train engines, the locomotives and the steamships? Why would that be important, okay? So think about that and write a sentence or two. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. Uh, down here on number eight and then send me a picture of this completed work, okay? So finish up these, um, you have two, three, four to answer, six, seven, eight, okay? So six more things to answer on this side and then send me a picture of that, all right? Let's go to the back side of our paper.
if you haven't done it already, here's my gift to you today. Here are the answers for your crossword puzzle. One across. It was easier to ship this mineral by train. Lead, L-E-A-D. Waukesha published this anti-slavery publication. American Freeman. What powered the first trains? Steam. The name of the first Wisconsin locomotive was Bob Ellis. Going down, another name for early engines, locomotive. First town in Wisconsin to receive rail, Waukesha. Number three, a train stop is a depot. Where is the world's longest railway? 5,777 miles long? Russia. The British name for railroad ties is sleepers. And early steam locomotive invented by George Stephenson and Stevenson and his son, the rocket. All right, you're welcome. If you didn't already have it finished, write your answers in. You should also know where you got those. We got those answers from from inside your page. So maybe go back to that section and underline the answers for this information, and that will help you when you're doing your test today or on Monday. All right. Are you ready for our last spot? And that is doing the cause and effect. Okay. Now I'm going to use a separate sheet of paper, and I want you to as well. Uh, we are going to do, um, it's immigrants come to the US, and we're going to have our first cause, and then one, two, three, four, five effects that come from that. I know you couldn't see all of those, but five effects that come from that, okay? All right, so the first thing that we want to do is let's read one more time together um, this little selection about immigrants. There were many reasons why immigrants came to the United States. They came to find work, buy land, and avoid religious persecution. Once they got here, immigrants faced an uncertain future. They moved to various states, seeking opportunities for jobs and food. Eventually, they settled into a particular state. They built farms or worked in one of the area's industries. Immigrants brought with them their customs and cultivated their cultural ideas, foods, and arts and clothing. Many of the aspects of an immigrant's culture are still practiced in the United States. Sometimes when an area had too many immigrants, such as big cities like New York, the immigrants moved to less populated states looking for work. This is one way that the rest of the United States was settled. Okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is what was the main cause, okay? What caused immigrants to come to the United States? They came to find work, buy land, and avoid religious persecution, okay? So in our first circle, our first over, we're going to write immigrants, come to U.S. to find work, buy land, avoid religious persecution. Sorry that my Camera is jumping again. All right. So that goes in our first one. That's our first cause. All right. So then what was the effect of that? They come to the U.S. All right. Well, first of all, they faced an uncertain future, right? All right. So in a face, an effect there was faced uncertain 
make sure you can see here. Sorry. Future. Now, how do we know that that's true? Well, think about it. Had any of these people been to the United States before? No, they're an immigrant. They live in another country. They're coming to the United States, but they may have heard a little bit about it, but they are not sure about what they're going to find. They're uncertain, okay? All right, face uncertain future. And let's combine in this one, uh, move to various states. Now, first, of course, they're going to come in through Ellis Island. So oftentimes they first settle along the East Coast, uh, but then we know that they travel to other states as well. Okay, so they move to the various states. What's the effect? Um, if we look here, they settle. in the various states. And here it says particular. To build farms. Work in industry and brought their customs, they shared their customs. That's their culture, the traditions that they had, okay? Oh, I've got to slide that up a little bit, don't I? I'm so sorry for my jumpy camera here. All right, can we see it all? There we go, that's better. There we go. All right. So immigrants come to the United States to find work by land and avoid religious persecution. They face an uncertain future and they move to various states. They settle in, build farms, work in industry, share their customs. And then what has happens? Um, cultures, which is their customs, still practice today. Um, and more and more people gather. Okay, so what's an effect of all that more and more people? Cities get too crowded. So then what happens? The cities get too crowded and immigrants moved. to other states. And the U.S. grows, right? More of the United States gets settled. Okay, so notice how we use some specific words right from this, but we also kind of use some of our own ideas that go along with it. We don't come up with something brand new that doesn't go along with what we have in our um, selection here. Um, and I'd like to have you show me this work on a sheet of paper. Here it is. Can you pause the video and write it right from here? Yes, you can. Same with your um, crossword puzzle. All right, so immigrants come to the United States to find work, buy land, avoid religious persecution. The effect of that is they face uncertain future and move to various states. The effect of that is that they settle in, build farms, work in industry, and share their customs. The effect of that, the cultures are still practiced today and more and more people gather together. 
The effect of that is some cities would get too crowded. The effect of that is immigrants would move away to other states and then the United States would continue to grow. And we could keep going and keep going and keep going, couldn't we? Okay, so cause and effect, all right? This is a cause and effect activity. Cause and effect. All right, back to me. I don't jump around as much, or do I? <laughs> All right, it is gorgeous out there. You make sure that you get your work done quickly and get outside to play. Remember, short breaks and then back to it, and then before you know it, you are done and can enjoy the rest of the day. All right, make sure you're calling me if you have any questions at all with anything. And let me think. Oh, um, I did originally say to do the test today. I will leave it up to you. I will open the test this afternoon. I do want to see that you have completed your work though. So you would need to send in uh, your picture of um, the work on the line graphs on the inside of the um, page of the paper and also the work that we just did together on the cause and effect, okay? So you have to submit those two things for me and then you don't have to wait for me to get them back to you. That's okay, I just need to show, you need to show me that you've been working, all right? And then if you would like to take the test, I'll have it open this afternoon. You can take it today, you could take it tomorrow, you could take it Sunday, you can take it Monday. You decide which day you would like to take it. You have options, how about that, okay? But um, you do need to get your math done um for sure that's the main thing for me as far as a lesson you do need to get your paragraph done oh i forgot to write it on this time um your paragraph number five altogether it would be okay paragraph number five and it's that wrap up that closing paragraph where you put everything together i gave specific directions about that in the reading video for today so if you need to go back and remember it's okay to go back and look at something that i have recorded for you all right Hey, it's just like having me on repeat, repeat, repeat. Have a great day. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Ta-ta, repeat.